Well, hello, I'm Josh and I'm back once again with another classic Christmas film for you. And this one's one of my favorites. I'm talking about Roy Del Ruth's 1947 film, It Happened on Fifth Avenue. It Happened on Fifth Avenue begins with a friendly hobo by the name of Aloysius T. McKeever, who sneaks into the boarded up Fifth Avenue mansion of big businessman Michael J. O'Connor, while O'Connor is away, living in his other home down south for the winter. McKeever has apparently been doing this for some time, as he immediately makes himself at home, wearing O'Connor's clothes and eating his food. While out on a walk, he runs into an ex-GI named Jim Bullock, a man who was recently kicked out of his apartment and is currently homeless. McKeever invites Bullock to stay with him at the O'Connor house, and before you know it, McKeever ends up welcoming in several more people who are without a home for the holidays, including O'Connor's own runaway daughter. And eventually, O'Connor himself comes to stay, pretending to be homeless, in order to keep an eye on his daughter and her interests in Jim Bullock. So as you can see, this film has a lot going on. Now this isn't necessarily one of the more famous Christmas movies, and I actually had never come across this film until about 3 or 4 years ago, though I found it to be a really great one nonetheless. Kind of like some other great films like Here Comes Mr. Jordan or maybe Shop Around the Corner would be a better example given the season, I found this to be just a fantastic example of a classic Hollywood studio film. And based on some of the original posters, was a pretty well received film at the time, getting great endorsements from directors like Frank Capra and Orson Welles, as well as stars like Bob Hope, Jack Benny, and Al Jolson. The writing and direction is great, and the screen is filled with some hilarious character actors. Everyone's just working at the top of their craft, and another fun aspect of it is the film takes place over both December holidays, Christmas and New Year's, so it kind of works as a bit of a New Year's movie as well. And one of the really interesting things about this film is though it takes place in New York City, it was very clearly shot on a soundstage in a studio. A huge shift from last week's film, Blast of Silence, which was, as I mentioned, quite notably shot on location, also in New York City. But here, many of the exterior shots are very obviously done in front of a large rear projected screen, and though I don't think the effects are that convincing by any means, I still find myself thinking of it as a New York movie. I think part of the reason it works here is because they use these effects so frequently, it just becomes a part of the way the story is told, rather than it calling attention to itself when used sparingly. It ends up giving the visuals of this film this kind of heightened reality to it that makes you feel like you're watching a play. And there's something about the actors, the writing, and the direction that's just so compelling, you quickly get wrapped up with the story and the characters, and in a way, this is a factor I really love about a lot of these classic films from Hollywood's golden age, as it feels almost magical. Definitely fitting for a warm and lighthearted Christmas film like this. And I don't want this whole Christmas review to be about what makes good or bad rear projection, but it was just an interesting aspect of the film that I noticed while re-watching, and I thought I'd mention it here. And as I also mentioned, this film has an incredible cast. Though it's debatable whether or not he is really the protagonist, the main character who brings all these people together in this story is Aloysius T. McKeever who is played by the great Victor Moore, and he is fantastic in this. He plays the kind of wise old hobo who is friendly and carefree despite having to sneak around to various abandoned homes throughout the year. In fact, if you didn't already know he was poor, you would never believe it as he carries himself as quite a rich man despite borrowing everything he has. And sure, sneaking into other people's homes when they're away is not really something to try out in the real world, but it's quite fun for a movie, as it allows for him to be contrasted with the very wealthy Michael J. O'Connor, who's one of the richest men in town and yet isn't happy at all. And Michael J. O'Connor is played by another really classic actor, Charles Ruggles, who does an incredible job as the rich businessman who has to learn to be humble and that there is more to life than just making that extra dollar. Don DeFore plays Jim Bullock and he is great as well. 
He kind of plays the leading man role in this as he falls in love with Trudy, not realizing that she's the daughter of O'Connor, the same one who evicts him from his apartment at the beginning of the film. And Gail Storm does a great job as Trudy as well as Anne Harding who plays Trudy's mother, Mary O'Connor. And she also becomes a larger element of the story as she is separated from her husband at the beginning of the film, citing his selfishness and pride as a few of her reasons. Though as the film goes on and Michael O'Connor starts to change, you see they begin to remember those things they saw in each other in the first place. And you may also notice, one of Bullock's old army pals who comes to stay with them is played by Alan Hale Jr., who classic TV fans will likely recognize as the skipper from Gilligan's Island. And between the leading roles and the bit parts, everyone just works so well together and creates some really funny moments. Nobody tries to outshine the other, they all just know their parts and play them perfectly to make up this wonderful ensemble cast. And as I said, this film is a bit of a hidden gem that sadly I don't usually hear a lot of people talking about. You'll sometimes see it pop up in holiday movie bundles and occasionally it'll be on TV, but that's usually all I hear about it. But over the years since I've seen it, it's really become one of my favorites. It has this kind of cyclical nature to it, where McKeever comes back to this house every winter to stay through the holidays, and watching this film is such a great time and the characters are so fun, it makes revisiting it every year feel almost like you're seeing old friends again, so I've always looked forward to watching it around this time. And if you want to watch it happen on Fifth Avenue, you can get it on all the usual streaming sites as a rent or buy option. And there are also a few ways to get it physically as well. You can pick it up pretty easily on DVD or Blu-ray, and as I said, it's also available often in some holiday movie packs or things like that. And the Blu-ray I have is pretty good. It was put out by Warner Archive, and I've been using it for clips throughout this video, so you can see the film looks great on it. The only downside is that it's pretty bare bones as far as special features go. It does have a pretty cool adaptation of the film for radio that was made back in 1947, so that can be kind of cool to put on, but other than that, there's not really anything else on it. Alright, so for my comment question, I'm wondering, what Christmas films do you watch every year? As I said, there's just something about this film that keeps me coming back every single December, and I'm wondering, what are some of your favorites? Be sure to put them in the comment section down below and start discussing. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe if you want to see some more of these. Be sure to keep watching movies and have a Merry Christmas! Some holly wreaths and mistletoe A great big Christmas tree A winter's day with lots of snow that's what Christmas means to me.